In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. A very warm welcome to York Minster and to this Eucharist on the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Welcome if you are a regular worshipper and welcome if you are experiencing this form of worship for the first time. This is my first time presiding here in this magnificent building as Archbishop of York and it's a joy to be in this place where prayers have been said for over 1,300 years. I'm joined today by Canon Linda Alley, Honorary Canon at York Minster, a member of the House of Laity on General Synod, and the Reverend Abigail Davison, Curate and Distinctive Deacon here at York Minster. We will also hear reflections from Abigail, from Rachel Bales, lead chaplain at York Teaching Hospital, NHS Foundation Trust, and from Mark Rance, manager of Wydale Hall Retreat Centre for the Diocese of York. They will each reflect on what prayer means to them in their daily living, for this is the theme of our Eucharist today, how we can grow and learn as people of prayer. So in this service, wherever we are, whoever we are, we come together to offer our prayers, to hear the word of God, and let that word shape our hearts and our minds, forming us as Christians and helping us to live out our faith in every aspect of our lives. That word of God, the word that we will hear about in our gospel reading, is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. And so we begin by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. 
May your loving mercy come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light to my path. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O let your mercy come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, beginning at verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees and the fields shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up a cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm struck by the significance of Psalm 65, verse 11. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. Even in these difficult COVID times, it's fine to ask the Lord to be bountiful. In recent weeks, I've been using texts to pray with a friend. Each day we text each other and we say what's happening to us and what we need. We pray simple, please God prayers. They don't need to be repetitive or complicated. And it's fantastic to see the answers to those prayers for health, for work, and for a particularly difficult situation that I've been wrestling with over the the last few weeks. And here at Wydale, the retreat house for the Diocese of York, we've been using Zoom to pray each morning. So 25 to 30 of us pray each morning on Zoom. We ask God for things for ourselves and for others, and it's been so encouraging to see those prayers answered often by the very next day. Personally speaking, I've been encouraged to pray more specifically. So in recent weeks, uh, we've had no income at all at Wydale, and we haven't wanted to spend anything that we haven't had to. But recently, a large tree fell down onto one of our neighbour's gardens, and we had to deal with it. And in order to complete that, we needed a new chainsaw. And I felt God say, Mark, ask for what you need. So I prayed for a thousand pounds for a new chainsaw. And the very next day, the Lord gave us a thousand and thirty pounds. I shared that with the Zoom prayer people and we were encouraged. We honestly believe that God is being abundant and his carts for Wydale are overflowing. Thou visitest the earth and blessest it. Thou makest it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. Thou preparest the corn, for so thou providest for the earth. Thou waterest her furrows, 
which was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things, in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched and since they had no root, they withered. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for that which was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet, such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the law of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, my name's Abigail and I'm a distinctive deacon, sometimes called a vocational or permanent deacon. And I'm talking to you from the gardens of St. Leonard's Hospice in York, where I work as spiritual care lead. Something struck me about today's gospel reading, and it's more profound than it might seem, so do bear with me. But good soil, the very best soil, has a lot of muck in it. There's always this danger as Christians that we point to the good stuff and say, there's proof God loves me. And then, well, we're not really sure what to do with the muck. Was God just not there? Are there some places, some situations where God just isn't? Does God come to church on a Sunday and then not to work on a Monday? One of my favourite descriptions of what deacons do is 
they go digging in the muck of life to see that God's love was already there. The muck can't be denied. And we can't deny where we've played our part in creating it for others. But through prayerful digging, it can become fertile soil and yield a hundredfold. I invite you this week, go digging and see what fruit it bears. St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13 and verse 23, Jesus said, but as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it and who indeed bears fruit. Uh, for the past few months during this uh, difficult, challenging time of lockdown, which we are just emerging from, I've been part of a small group of people who've been producing resources to help us pray. Yes, pray in our homes, but pray throughout our lives. And as we've been preparing these resources, it's brought us face to face with the question, well, what is prayer? And although there's no single answer, uh, there are various things that people say to describe the life of prayer. Some people, for instance, say prayer is like eating. Uh, it's something you do each day. You need a regular discipline about it. It's good for you. Some people, well, St. Paul, for instance, he says in that rather provocative way of his, he says, pray all the time. Now, I don't quite think he means do that activity uh, we call prayer all the time. I think he means Make your life a prayer. Make the whole of your life a hymn of praise to God. So it's rather like saying prayer is like breathing. Uh, it's something you do all the time uh, to keep you alive. But yes, prayer is like eating. It's regular. It needs discipline. Yes, it could be, should be like breathing. It should be something that's happening all the time. But let me give you my kind of current working definition of prayer. But I want to come at it through the lens of that gospel story, we've just heard the parable of the sower, because it's a strange and in itself rather provocative little story. Uh, my feeling is that for the people who heard it the first time that Jesus said it, that is without the explanation which the disciples got and we got later on, I think they would have been quite bewildered by the story. After all, they were themselves in the main, you know, fishermen and peasant farmers, they knew about sowing seeds. So they would hear the story and say, well, how come some of the seed fell on the path? You know, why were you so wasteful of the seed? And why didn't you clear the stones out of the rocky ground? And if there are birds coming to eat the, eat the seed, why for goodness sake didn't you build a scarecrow? Th they would have heard the story and been, I think, rather irritated by it. Um, this sower, obviously didn't know much about sowing, and yet he got the most magnificent harvest. And isn't this perhaps the point of the story? In fact, isn't it the point of the whole gospel that Jesus comes? He comes to us not to reward the rewardable, not to love the lovable. He comes to us to bring us into relationship with God, to plant the seed which is his word, his life in our hearts so that our lives might be fruitful. Why? Well, because he loves us so much. Now, that is the startling, beautiful heart of the gospel story, that God comes to us even though we didn't build the scarecrow, clear the ground, even though we were wasteful. So here's my kind of working definition of prayer. Yes, it's like eating. Yes, it's like breathing. But most of all, it's like loving. Prayer is the lover coming into the presence of the beloved and saying, I love you. And what I like about that definition of prayer is it puts all the emphasis where it belongs, which is not with us, but with God. God is the great lover. 
God is the great lover who out of his great love for us and for all the world comes to us in his son Jesus Christ to plant his word, his life, his hope in our hearts that our lives might be fruitful as we in prayer enter into relationship with the God who in Jesus is revealed as this community of persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we join in the very life of God when we pray, when we worship. Why? We're doing it here around this table in this great house of prayer in sharing bread and wine. Prayer is what God does in us through the Holy Spirit. What we call prayer is just our response. However faltering, um, however uncertain, whenever we open our hearts, our minds, our voices to God and tell God our hopes, tell God our fears, express to God our hopes and our love, then not only do we become people of prayer, but we enter again into relationship with God. So having heard and received God's word for us today, let us now declare our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ. Let us pray to the Father. And as I offer these prayers, uh, in your hearts and minds, please offer to God your own concerns and hopes and fears. Almighty God, as we come before you in prayer, we ask that you till the ground of our hearts and plant the seed of your word within us. Through your grace, may we live fruitful lives, witnessing to your truth, proclaiming your love and serving your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, teach us how to pray in silence and simplicity and through everything that we think or speak or do. Help us to speak to you as we speak to a friend and make us a prayer for the church. Let our prayer be as close as our breath and may we not fear opening up our hearts to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, in times of challenge and change, in times of uncertainty, confusion and despair, teach us to keep on praying and never lose heart. Help us persevere in faith, keep us rooted in the gospel and hold fast to all that is good so that Christ may grow within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, you know our needs and hear our prayers before we even ask. 
We pray for our world in all of its need. Hear the cry of those who call out to you today. We pray for those who are suffering, for those who are in pain, anguish or grief, and for those who live in fear. May our prayers, may the longings of our hearts from which compassion and justice grow and the please, place from which we plead, thy kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Prayer is vital to my daily life as a person and as a hospital chaplain. Time and time again, I've had to learn the lesson that I cannot rely on my own strength and need God's resourcing each and every day. Sometimes prayer is a struggle and at other times it's the most natural thing in the world. As in the parable of the sower, sometimes the ground is rocky and hard and other times the seeds seem to spring up easily. Prayer has been a challenge during the pandemic. It's felt important to be open and imaginative and creative. The use of symbols have been helpful to many of our patients. Knitted hearts made by folk in the local community have been used to connect loved ones and to remind them of God's love. Hand carved crosses made by workers who've been furloughed or shielded, have helped people to remember that Jesus knows the pain of our suffering. Battery operated tea lights have been a sign of hope that suffering does not have the final word. Do you know, sometimes that's just enough to help somebody through another day. For the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot put it out. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And if you're with anyone at home, please share a sign of peace with them. And if you are alone, you are not alone because the peace of Christ is with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death, and so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and singing. praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you, he broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of Jesus, St Peter, Paulinus and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. When the disciples asked Jesus that question, how do we pray? 
Uh, he, of course, taught them the prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer, the prayer which is the heart of all prayer, the prayer that gives us Jesus' own words for us to say. And so when we offer this prayer, uh, God comes to us and speaks in us and through us. And so we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have bore for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen.
dear sisters and brothers, it's been a great joy to share this Eucharist with you today. Uh, the first time I've celebrated here in York Minster um, in my new ministry, though not the first time I've celebrated here. The last time was 28 years ago when I walked here um, from Durham with a, with a great load of young people. Um, I've been here many times before, but not presided at the Eucharist. Uh, so may God richly bless you uh, wherever you are. Uh, may God fill your hearts with peace and joy and love. May he make your life uh, a place of prayer and thanksgiving. Uh, and may you persevere um, as we begin to discover afresh what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the teaching of Jesus. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So may you, receive God's word, and may you go now to do God's will, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the, in name, the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.